Hi, my name is Nick and welcome to this five minute lecture on the basics of oxygen delivery. It hopefully comes as no surprise to you, but occasionally our patients require more than the standard 21% of oxygen that we find in fresh air. There are a few different ways we can deliver supplementary oxygen to our patients, but how do we decide which device to use? Current thoughts on oxygen is that we should give just enough to allow a patient to have a normal oxygen saturations. That's normal for them, so for a healthy young person, that may be 97 to 99%. For an older person, it may be 94 to 97%. And for a patient with a type of COPD who relies on hypoxia rather than hypercarbia to drive respiration, 88 to 92% may be acceptable. Oxygen flow rates, not percentages, are controlled via the oxygen port attached to either an oxygen cylinder or piped oxygen through the walls. In the UK hospital, oxygen cylinders are usually black with a white top. Nasal specs are a nice way of delivering small supplementary amounts of oxygen to our patients. They have the advantage of being more comfortable and more convenient than a mask and allow the patient to eat and drink while still getting extra oxygen. The disadvantage of nasal specs is we can't really deliver a high rate of oxygen so we can only use it for lower levels of supplementary oxygen from 2 to 4 litres a minute which equates to approximately 28 to 35 percent. The simplest type of oxygen mask relies on the flow of oxygen to deliver the percentage of oxygen required. The higher the flow rate, the higher the percentage of oxygen delivered. That said, it's not very accurate. The faster the patient breathes in, the more air is entrained by the sides of the mask mixed with the flow of oxygen, diluting the oxygen that's inhaled. Venturi masks are a good way of controlling the percentage of oxygen being delivered, but also allowing higher flows of oxygen air mix. Each Venturi valve has a percentage of oxygen on it and a flow rate required to deliver that percentage. The valve has small slits in the side through which the flow of oxygen down the middle drags air in to equalise the pressure differential. It is known as the Venturi effect. And because this effect is calculable, we know how much oxygen is being delivered. To change the level of oxygen, change the valve, which come in a variety of percentages from 24 to 60%. The flow of oxygen is very drying, and one way of overcoming this is to use humidified oxygen via the system you see here. The percentage of oxygen is controlled by this adjustable valve and the flow rate using the same Venturi effect, but in this case the oxygen is passed through distilled water to humidify it. The downsides, it's noisy, it's wet, and it has to be changed regularly due to the infection risk. So what do we do with a patient who needs more? Well, we can use a non-rebreathing mask which is like a normal oxygen mask but has a reservoir bag. We've already discussed that with a simple oxygen mask, air is entrained in via the size of the mask as we tend to breathe in much faster than the flow of oxygen. The non rebreathing mask gets around this by having a reservoir full of oxygen for the patient to draw on. Although some air is still entrained using this method, we can deliver up to 85% oxygen to our patient. For the non rebreathing mask to work, the reservoir bag must be inflated before use we must use 15 litres flow of oxygen and the mask must be tight fitting to draw oxygen from the reservoir bag and limit entraining. Any patient requiring this level of oxygen has something wrong with their oxygen uptake and requires specialist referral. This method of oxygen delivery is not supposed to be a long term thing. The final thing I want to talk about is not a device for delivering oxygen but a device for delivering certain drugs, the nebulizer. The nebulizer has a chamber where liquid drug is put. Air or oxygen is then passed through this chamber which turns the drug into a fine vapour to be inhaled by the patient. You will struggle to get the flow of oxygen or air in a nebulizer much above 8 litres per minute as the back pressure from the chamber will cause it to blow off the wall. Well, that's the basics. Thank you very much for listening.